Hi everyone, I'm Surbi Goel and today I'm going to be presenting our paper titled Approximation Schemes for LU Regression. This is joint work with Ilyas Daikonikolos, Sushrut Karmalkar, Adam Clivens and Madhi Sultan Ulkotavi. So let's start with the definition of LU Regression. So it's going to be very similar to linear regression. We'll be given input, which is going to be samples S drawn from some underlying distribution D. And we'll assume that our labels are arbitrary. That means they can have any kind of noise. And this is more standard uh, known as the agnostic noise model. What we would like to do is design an algorithm that takes in these input samples and outputs a hypothesis H, which minimizes some notion of loss. And what we want our uh, hypothesis loss to satisfy is that it should be competitive with the best possible loss in some underlying concept class C up to error epsilon. And the concept class C that we're going to focus on uh, is going to be the ReLUs, and hence the name ReLU regression. So here our class will be parameterized uh, by weight vectors, which are going to be an R to the D. And it's going to be a nonlinear function class. The interest for ReLUs comes from the fact that this uh, ReLUs are the most commonly used activation functions in uh, neural networks. And if in the pursuit of understanding neural networks, this is the first building step to understand this function class. So here, much like uh, standard linear regression, we'll focus on the loss, which is going to be the squared loss. And how uh, technically you would attack this problem would be to do empirical risk minimization, which will be like take the samples and try to minimize this loss on these samples. And given enough samples, we hope the solution will generalize. Now, this is challenging in this setup because the loss is actually non-convex due to the non-linearity lying inside the squared loss and the non-linearity being value. So it's not clear that we can optimize this loss. So the first question to ask is, is this problem even efficiently solvable for agnostic noise? And here by efficiently solvable, we mean something that runs in polynomial time in all the parameters. So well, uh, unfortunately, this is not true if we don't make any assumptions on the distribution. In fact, uh, there's been a lot of prior work uh, showing hardness in different setups. So in fact, it was shown that even minimizing just the training loss itself is NP hard. And if you assume a standard computation and hardness assumptions, then you can show that agnostically learning over the uniform distribution on the Boolean cube and even a much well-behaved distribution like the Gaussian distribution is in fact hard. And you can get a super polynomial lower bound for learning over the Gaussian distribution. And the reason for focusing on this Gaussian distribution is that a lot of positive results in the learning theory literature for neural networks are actually known only under this distribution. So in fact, uh, this noise model even makes this problem challenging. The only positive known result uh, that works general uh, distribution independent requires the, that the input be on the unit sphere. So you want uh, the norm of the input to be bounded by one. And this uh, algorithm runs in time, which is exponential in the error parameter. However, in the dimension, it's polynomial. And here, the, uh, the results are scale sensitive. So if you scale the norm of the input, uh, this, the results uh, actually start depending on this norm. So these results cannot be directly applied to the Gaussian distribution, where the norm of the input is much larger and a function of t. OK, so this seems like a lot of our hope is lost, that even the simple problem is not solvable. So in fact, maybe our goal is too, too strong. So what can we do? Now, recall that our goal was so forth. So we wanted to output a hypothesis which is competitive uh, with the best hypothesis loss, say that we call that opt, up to an additive error of epsilon. What if we relax this assumption and change our goal to say that uh, we don't want to get a loss which is opt, but like some constant times opt plus epsilon. So okay, more formally, can we design a polynomial time approximation scheme for some unif universal constant C? Okay, and a hint towards why uh, such a thing could be possible is that in the work uh, which showed the hardness in the setup by Goel, Karmarkar, and Clivens, in fact, show that uh, if you relax the assumption to outputting a loss, which is some function of opt, so here opt to the two third, uh, you can actually get a polynomial time up scheme for doing this. And here opt is less than one. Uh, so opt, by, opt to the two third is worse than a constant opt guarantee. But this gives, an, uh, gives a direction that maybe such a thing is possible in polynomial time. And in fact, our paper actually answers an affirmative that we can get a constant opt approximation scheme. And in fact, we can uh, relax our assumption and we don't need to work for just the Gaussian distribution. We just need our distribution to be isotropic log concave. And here isotropic, uh, I mean, mean zero and covariance matrix identity. And we need our Y to be bounded, which is a standard assumption made in uh, all works. Okay, 
So what we're able to show is that there does exist a polynomial time approximation scheme. In fact, it uses samples which are almost linear in the dimension and the runtime is just quadratic in the dimension. Okay, and information theoretically, uh, the sample complexity is optimal up to log factors. Our, uh, and this, this, as I mentioned, resolves the open question from Goelka, Marker, and Clivens. Our key insight is, in fact, to show that there exists a convex surrogate loss whose minimizer is very closely related to the minimizer of the non-convex squared loss that we started with originally. And uh, because this is a convex loss, we can easily optimize it. And in fact, outputting just the solution itself suffices for our approximate guarantee in our setup. Okay. So let me now jump into some technical details of our uh, the proof of our result. So let's start with what seeing what the surrogate loss is. So this is what the surrogate loss looks like. Uh, it might look a little bit complicated, uh, but uh, we will further see like what this loss is trying to do. Okay, and this surrogate I, I should point out is not new and not given by us. It was actually introduced a long time ago in the 90s by Kivinen and Vermouth, and it was called the matching loss. And it's an implicitly also present in the work for generalized linear models uh, by Kalai Shastri and Kakari Kalai Kanadi and Shamir. And uh, in both these settings, this was analyzed for the no noise setting where uh, there is no noise in the label or the noise being mean zero. Okay. And uh, let's look at uh, what the gradient of this loss looks like. And this will help us relate it to the squared loss in some sense. So this is what the gradient looks like. And by simple calculation, you can see that the gradient of the squared loss looks so forth. And the only thing different uh, between the two gradients is this uh, term of sigma prime w dot x. So for our, our case, uh, the sigma prime w dot x is upper bounded by one. So this looks like a forced update that you're always updating uh, with the best, the maximum that you can update. Okay. And uh, it's also not too hard to see that for any, in fact, any non-decreasing uh, sigma, this is convex, not just ReLU, but any non-decreasing sigma, which is uh, which are like other common activations that are used in uh, deep learning theory. Okay, so this is a convex loss, but uh, what does it what is it trying to really capture? So we give an alternate uh, interpretation to this uh, through this notion of Chow parameters. So let me define first uh, what the Chow parameters and then go into what uh, this loss is trying to do. So, so simply for any function f, uh, we will define these Chow parameters with respect to this underlying distribution d that we have. And we denote it by chi of f. And this is just going to be the expectation of f of x times x. So chi of f is, f is going to be a d-dimensional vector. And we'll also have this notion of the true Chow parameters, which is going to be the expectation of y, x. So these are the couch type, uh, the Chow parameters of uh, expectation of y condition on x. Okay, and uh, now let's see what this really uh, is trying to capture. Also, let me point out that uh, these have been previously defined for Boolean functions, and here we're just extending them to uh, real valued functions. So recall again from the previous slide, the gradient of the surrogate uh, has this form, which is actually, if you substitute uh, these definitions, is exactly equal to chi of sigma w minus the true Chow parameters chi. So in fact, minimizing this gradient norm is sort of equivalent to finding a W that matches the Chow parameters to the true Chow parameter. So you can think of it as matching like first moments. Okay, so this surrogate loss is trying to, in, in some sense, match the first moments. Okay, now we're gonna show that this these first moments actually carry enough information uh, that we need for our approximate guarantee. So first thing we're able to show is that these Chow parameters are actually related to the weight vectors that they, are, they correspond to. So if, uh, if U and V are two vectors and the Chow parameters are close, then U and V are in fact close too. Okay, this is what our property shows. And in fact, uh, it's not hard to see that this also shows us that the surrogate loss that we have is strongly convex, which is a great property because this allows us to say that minimizing our loss is actually in turn minimizing this gradient norm which in turn is minimizing our Chow distance. So in fact, our surrogate loss is exactly trying to minimize the Chow distance. Okay, and how does this Chow distance uh, relate? We can show that uh, if W star is any minimizer of the squared loss, then for any isotropic distribution, you can actually show that the Chow parameters of W star are in fact close to the true Chow parameters uh, by a function of opt and here precisely square root opt. 
So like I mentioned before, uh, we can just uh, show that if since W hat is a minimizer of the surrogate loss, the gradient of the surrogate loss at W hat will be zero, which implies uh, that the Chow parameters of W hat and W star are also going to be close. So this is how W hat and W star are related by their Chow parameters being close. Now recall that we showed that the Chow parameters being close also implies that the parameters are being close. So we can show that W star and W hat cannot be too far and are within square root of pi mu. So in fact, geometrically, this tells us that uh, for W hat being the minimizer of the surrogate loss, which is unique since sur the surrogate loss is convex. In fact, uh, all the optimal solutions for the squared loss problem have to lie in this ball of radius square root of by mu around W hat, which is a great property that we get. And it's not hard to see by using Lipschitzness and uh, triangle inequality, you can say that this will imply that the loss of W hat cannot be uh, too far from the loss of W star. And in fact, this is within order of the loss of W star. And this constant uh, here, in fact, depends on what this parameter mu is, which is a property of the distribution. Okay, so, so this gives us a clean connection between how W hat and W star are related. And in fact, we can show uh, with uh, using sophisticated concentration analysis that uh, we can work and get similar guarantees in the sample setup where we don't have access to the uh, true, true loss and the true uh, distribution. Okay. So this is, a, this is a great thing that we can get this constant opt approximation. However, our constant could be bad and could be much larger than uh, one. So in fact, we can further improve this result by showing that we can actually get a one plus alpha approximation scheme for this problem that runs in time, which is going to be d to the poly one by epsilon, a uh, one by alpha and polynomial in one by epsilon. So this kind of here is a trade-off that if you increase, uh, if you if you want closer and closer to one, you have to pay more and more in uh, uh, your time complexity. So alpha is a trade-off between how close you want your approximation and how much you're paying in your uh, time complexity. The only caveat here is that our solution now long, no longer is a ReLU. It's a much more complicated function. And therefore, we refer to this as the impo improper, uh, it's an improper algorithm. OK. And our key insight here is that given our approximate solution, which has some properties, we can further refine our uh, hypothesis to areas where the errors are large. Okay, this is a standard technique called localization, and it's have been well explored in the learning theory literature over the last uh, 15 years. And in fact, the work that we draw the most inspiration from is this work by Daniel Lee in 2015, which tries to get a PTAS uh, for a similar setup for half spaces. Okay, so let me just briefly define, uh, show you like what our uh, localization technique looks like. Uh, so let's see the, that this is our setup that we have from our previous uh, discussion. We know that W hat and W star are not too, fo not too far. So what we do is we divide our area based on W hat into these three bands. So the first band uh, is where W hat X is greater than T. So note that here W star X will also be positive uh, most of the time. There'll be a small area where it won't be positive. So what we, we know is that since w star dot x is going to be positive, the ReLU will just be a linear function in this uh, space. So what we do is we fit the best linear classifier in this area. The second area is this band, which is the band which has the maximum amount of error because here w star could be, uh, w star dot x could take more positive and negative values. So here we do something more sophisticated and we approximate our uh, ReLU here with the polynomial approximator. And we can show that we don't need a very high degree approximator to just uh, get our accurate guarantees in this band. And the last, similar to the first case, uh, in the band below, we know that W hat dot x is uh, very negative. So we know that W star dot x will also likely be negative. And uh, hence, uh, when, when the ReLU's input is negative, the output is 0. So we can just output 0. What we're able to show is that if you can, if you choose this t threshold carefully, then in fact uh, this error is not too large, and we can get our approximate uh, guarantee. So let me just conclude by summarizing our uh, results. So first thing we showed was that there exists a convex surrogate loss, which allows us to match these uh, Chow parameters. Okay, 
The second thing we showed was that matching these Chao parameters is actually sufficient for our approximate learning guarantee that we want. So this is a strong characterization of how Chao parameters are related to learning. And the last thing we showed was that this approximate solution can be further refined using more sophisticated machinery to actually get a polynomial time approximation scheme, which gives you any one plus alpha approximation. Thank you. <laughs>